everyone and welcome to another review from Colour with Claire. Today we're going to be looking at some absolutely stunning paints. These are transparent watercolours by Paul Rubens. Now these were gifted to me very generously by one of you beautiful followers on my Amazon wish list, and I am forever grateful. Thank you so so much. Now these are absolutely stunning as I've said. We'll get straight to it. So first of all the packaging itself is gorgeous. It comes in this very heavyweight, it almost looks like linen box and it's also kind of shiny so it sort of um, represents the metallic watercolours within. You open the box and inside you've got a little leaflet. Um, it's all in Chinese though so I can't, you can't read it but it just does show you swatches of all of the different paints that come in the Paul Rubens collection. You've then got this beautiful piece of watercolour card with all of the English names of the paints on it. And as you can see, I've already swatched out the paints and I'll be showing you this in more detail as we go through the review. But you can see here, just under the light, how beautifully reflective and shiny these paints are. So then you have a gorgeous soft chamois leather cloth, which is wrapped around the paint tin itself. And I'll just bit awkward to get out but I'll just uh, remove that so we can have a quick look at this cloth it is beautifully soft I'm pretty sure it's probably for um, drying your brushes on or something like that uh, but I wouldn't want to mess it up it's it's stunning it really is it, the quality the luxury of it um, it's really second to none and then you've got the bottom of the box which is just the same as the top so the tin itself is a beautiful blush pink colour with the Paul Rubens icon printed onto it and on the back you can see they've even included a handy little loop for you to stick your finger through so that it's not going to fall and you can use it a bit like a palette. So really nice attention to detail. You open up the tin and first of all you can see we have four large wells here for you to mix your paints. You then open this side and there are several more wells here as well, as well, wells as well. <laughs> and then the paints are obviously here inside. Now you can lift the paints out and you have even more wells to do your mixing in. So that it really is um, sort of, they've really thought about when you're taking this out and about and you're going to need lots of different areas to mix your different colours. You have that sort of built into this set. You don't have to take an extra palette with you. So the paints are set into this metal frame and as you can see they don't fall out, they're all kind of gripped into it so if you're taking this out and about as I say um, they're not going to fall around or um, come out or wriggle or rattle around. So you pop that back in there. Now all the different individual paints can be removed so you can put them in a different order if you like, it's up to you, but they do stay in their place underneath these little grippers so they're not going to rattle around. Now the colours are obviously beautiful, you can see from the swatches that I've done that they show up incredibly well on white card. There are tons and tons of different colours and this is the metallic set. So Paul Rubens also do a standard watercolour set but this one is the shimmering metallics and you can just see they really really do shimmer. Now I did want to show you a bit of a demo. I thought I'd do them on the white paper first because um, they're dry and you can often see when they're dry the metallic pigments better than when they're wet. So I did this first. And now I'm going to be showing you on black paper in real time so you can see what they're like. Now I'm going to give them a quick spray so that we can activate those pigments. Just a little bit of water spray there. We're going to move these to one side and let's have a look on our black paper how these perform. So even on white as you can see they're really opaque. So if you are using these in colouring books, they are going to stand out, they are going to show up. A few of the colours, like maybe the pearl silver white or the pearl platinum, uh, look very sort of delicate and they can be used as a glittery wash over something you've already coloured. So that would be nice just to add a little bit of shimmer or sparkle to your pre-coloured pages. So I've got my brush, I've got my water, let's pop it here and let's go. So... First of all, we're going to start off with that um, pearl silver white. Can you see me on camera? Yes, you can see. So I'm just working the paint a little bit, making sure that 
it's all been um, melted with the water and then here we go so this the pearl silver white as you can see it shows up much better on black than it does on the white next up we have the pearl platinum so these paints really don't take a lot of activation at all you just swill it around a little bit they don't feel chalky they feel very very silky and smooth and they are just absolutely stunning so you can see here all of the different pigments just moving around um, in the water there very very sparkly very shiny and we all love a bit of glitter don't we so these paints are kind of similar to the Calero Fine Tech paints or the Gansai Tambi Starry paints. There's quite a few different metallic options out there um, going from really cheap to very expensive like your Twinkling H2Os. They're really, really expensive. I'd love to try those. Um, but these cost £50 at the moment for this set, which is obviously, it's up there. Um, they're not expensive as those twinkling h2o's but it is up there budget wise so i can understand if these are out of a lot of people's price ranges i certainly wouldn't have been able to get them if it wasn't for one of my beautiful followers who ordered it for me um but you'll see from the the pigments and the vibrancy and the opacity that they create that they really are a luxury product so um you know you probably can get something very similar to these for a cheaper price but I don't think they're going to be as vibrant as sparkly and as vivid as um, these Paul Rubens now I am going to be doing a video in the future at some point hopefully the near future where I will actually um, compare these paints with the Colero Fine Tech and the Gansai Tambi and any others that I managed to get hold of before then so you'll be able to see which one comparatively comes out on top from all of those different brands but at the moment that these are just absolutely stunning i can't really see any difference between these and the calero but then again i'm not looking you know side by side so this is just from memory so this color that we're using here is called flare red and that does show up a lot nicer on your white than it does on the black some of them just come out quite silvery but again, it really depends what you're colouring, um, what you're colouring them on. You might be using them on the midnight colouring books that have those um, those black backgrounds. Um, but if you are equally colouring them on normal colouring books, you can see that they come out really, really bright. So they are watercolours. You can mix and blend them. They're a little more opaque than your standard watercolours and obviously you've got all of that beautiful glittery shimmery pigment in there as well. So I will be showing you in just a moment a page that I have started from a colouring book using these paints so you can see how they look in situ so to speak. So we moved on to what colour is this? This is a grape myrtle or crepe myrtle, which I believe is a tree. I was told this when I did um, my live live stream for these paints when I first got them. Now you can see here that the colour that I've just put on is a very beautiful sort of magenta pink colour, but when I've put it onto the black, it comes out a gorgeous blue. So hopefully you can see that as it shines in the light and out of the light, it changes colour. Next up we have Symphony Purple, which is a gorgeous, very rich purple. And as you can see, when they dry, they really are a lot more um, easier to see the pigments and the shine. So this one is Deep Interference Blue, and that is a really gorgeous, rich blue as well need another piece of card I always always run out of card when I'm doing these swatches because I do the swatches too big just another piece of card right here we go so that's those I'll put those to dry we then have the symphony blue which 
which is a bit deeper than the previous. This one's simply called shiny blue. <laughs> They're all pretty shiny, but this one's particularly shiny. So let's see how this comes out. Yeah, it's, it's a gorgeous, very light, very pale color, but it is incredibly silvery and shiny. Next up is deep interference green. So we've got interference red, interference blue, interference green. I don't know what they're interfering with, <laughs> but, um, this one, again, like the previous colour, is a very pale kind of mint green and it's more of a shimmer than a sparkle, if that makes sense. It's more of a pearl colour. Next is fruit green, which looks to be the lightest green in the palette, but we could be surprised. Yeah, see, it's, it's a lot more saturated in colour than the previous one. I think the previous one is um, silver with a very slight hint of green. So we next have golden maroon, which on the palette looks like a kind of olive green. It looks like a metallic olive green. So we'll see how that comes out because apparently it's maroon. No, it comes out as a beautiful, beautiful green. But if you look at the, um, the white paper comparison, the golden maroon, you can actually see that out of the light, it looks brown and then in the light, it goes green. So they do change depending on which way you tilt them into the light. Next is the dark green. Which one did I just go on? <laughs> I've lost count now. Uh, fruit green, golden maroon, dark green, this one. <laughs> okay, so this is dark green. Let's have a look at you. Yeah, so I'm not sure whether the camera's picking this up because they are quite similar, those three. Um, to look at but from my eye I can see that this is definitely more of a goldish kind of green this is a brighter lighter green and this one's deeper and more of a forest green so next we have brown which will hopefully be bronze yeah lovely shiny bronze gorgeous and second to last is silver black. So this one I can imagine being a bit like a pewter. Yeah, lovely, lovely dark greyish silver. It's not a bright silver. And then finally we have a flash purple. So for some reason they've left a purple until the last bit. They could have put it in with the other purples, but hey, why, why not? Uh, maybe I can always... Uh, move that around, move the pans around a little bit. So this flash purple is not showing up too well on the uh, the black card, but on the white, it's a very, very nice, very deep grape purple. So let's have a look at the dried colors on the black. Here you can hopefully see, yep, all of the colors on black paper. Now, I think my favourites that are showing up so far is this one here, which is the brown, and this gold, which is the royal gold. They're my two favourites. I do love a good shiny gold, I must say. Um, but this one here is the deep interference blue, and that one is really, really shiny. Let's see if I can do a bit of a, a, bit of a wiggle in the light so you can see them properly. Super, super shiny. These haven't dried quite yet, but still very very metallic and beautiful and again just very quickly show you all of these colors close up under the light on your white paper because i think everybody or the majority of people are going to be using these on white if you in your coloring books and just look at this absolutely gorgeous water that's all sparkly and shiny all of those pigments going around there Okay, so I did say I was going to show you a work in progress in an actual colouring book. So let me just move all of this out of the way. Otherwise, I can see us having a big water flood all over this. And that is not a good idea. So this is the Disney Portraits colouring book. And as you can see, I've started colouring Alice in Wonderland. Now, if she's out of the light, it's still a really nice, beautiful blue colour. But it's really when you shine her under the light that you see these paints come to life. So I'm just trying to get the best angle for you here. You can see that I've done her top um, or underneath her apron. I've done her lips in a bit of red as well. But it really is those blue eyes that are calling out to me at the moment. 
they're absolutely stunning these paints will be fantastic for adding accents onto coloring pages i don't think an entire page should be painted with them it would probably be a bit too much maybe it won't i don't know but um i would say using them for accents is the best thing so things like eyes lips um, and i'm probably going to do some of these flowers as well and then the rest in colored pencil so it really adds another dimension to your picture it makes everything pop uh previous one that i did with the calero paints was this tinkerbell here and you can see uh, the gold shining on that as well so it really does work nicely as an accent next to your coloured pencil work so the Paul Rubens paints as I've mentioned are around £50 to buy on Amazon I will be leaving a link in the description for those of you that would like to purchase um, you do get the absolutely gorgeous tin you get the piece of chamois cloth um, and it would make an absolutely stunning gift for somebody who is into watercolours uh, it really does look like a gift set. It doesn't just look like your basic bog standard black uh, tin of watercolours. So even the box itself is metallic and shiny and I just absolutely adore them. So once again, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart to the lovely ladies who sent these to me from my wish list. I will forever be grateful to anyone who sends me anything. I never expect it, but I'm always appreciative and um, I will definitely be using these more and more. I will, of course, be doing the comparison review, which I've already mentioned, so that you can see how these stand up next to Calero paints, Gansai Tambi and anything else I can find watercolour metallic uh, before them. So I really hope you've enjoyed having a look at these stunning paints do let me know uh, in what books you would use them in for what kind of thing you would use them on for your accents or would you go all out and paint an entire page with them it's totally up to you one little tip i'll give you before i go is that if you do want a more opaque color more saturated color don't add so much water it's exactly the same with your calero paints as well and any other sort of watercolor metallic pigments if you do want them very rich very saturated just use the most uh, the least sorry amount of water that you can so very small amount of water because obviously in your coloring books um, using a lot of water in most books will buckle the paper so you need to use a slight bit of water anyway but that really does help to keep them very saturated and very pigmented if you did want just a very shiny very soft delicate wash you could use a ton of water and a big fat brush and just go over the whole thing so that it's got that bit of sparkle so again, really hope you've enjoyed looking at this review. Let me know in the comments what you think. Please give it a thumbs up if you think it deserves it. And I will see you very soon on Colour with Claire.